Hello there, I'm Sarah Venza, and well, today I'm going to be doing a speedrun of Fable Any% Percent for the original Xbox. That is the 2004 version. This is pre-Lost Chapters. This is the one that came before everything that most people, I'd say, maybe, possibly, might know. Um, so, instead of ending with the big bad dragon, we end with the big bad jack of blades. This is humanoid form thing. Anyway. Um, let's go ahead and get the show on the road. In five, four, three, two, one, let's go. All right. Get the rolling puns out of the way, because you're going to be seeing a lot of that. Um, so, yeah, the reason, of course, is it is faster than running. In just this one little childhood segment, actually, it's like seven seconds faster. And that's uh, only going to be going up the more that we level up our speed stat, because um, combat speed is basically just, you know, how quickly you attack and also, like, your defensive actions, I guess. So blocking, rolling, it's part of that. Anyway, there is a story to this game. Um, quite a fable, if you will. Um, <laughs> it um, starts off pretty pretty normal. It's our sister's birthday. We forgot to get her a present. Oh well. It happens. You know. Um, too busy daydreaming. Anyway, we were... Um, eh. <laughs> Sorry. We were tasked by our father to go perform some good deeds in order to earn some gold. Um, we did one good deed by punching the bully earlier, and we did another one by returning the teddy bear to the little girl. And then... We accepted a bribe from, an, from a man who's having an affair with his wife. So, um, yeah. Trying to avoid getting the attention of the town guards, I managed to avoid getting caught by them at the very least. So, we are all good. We are spared a, we are spared a annoying lecture. Our sister has been given the chocolates. And bandits raid the town. Happy birthday. Anyway, we're about to be introduced to a man named Maze. Well, we would be if I weren't skipping the cutscenes and everything. Um, our father, well, he's dead. Our sister is missing, and our mother is also missing. Presumed dead. So that's all fun. Um, anyway, Maze takes us to the Heroes Guild where we will learn the ways of combat and heroism, and also be introduced to You'll the Guildmaster here, as well as Whisper, who we don't up. really have a liking for, so, you know, we're gonna punch her a couple of times there. One, to help me set up my movement to get through the guild a little bit more easily. Two, um, I don't really like her. And three... <laughs> Uh, let's see, what was the third one? Oh yeah, right, aggressive actions are not tolerated within the, within the guild. So, um, I'll get to that in just a little bit more. Um, for now though, we need to punch this dummy because the guildmaster wants us to see what sort of potential we have as a hero. So, Charles has tried punching it, not very effective, gives us a stick. That's a little bit more effective. Ah, now that's more We need to pick up that experience orb, we'll be seeing a lot of those. Um, let's see here. Our first quest, official quest, I guess, is, um, going to the Guild Woods to kill some beetles because they are a, quote, damn nuisance, end quote. And yeah, they, they're kind of annoying, just a little bit. They, they can bug out the soft target system a little bit and cause me to swing in weird directions, so if I'm whiffing hits... Or if I'm, you know, swinging at one that's further away from the one that's actually close to me. That's why. It's not because I'm bad. But thankfully, we didn't have to deal with that. Well done, lad. The beetles are all dead. You can come out of the woods now. Obligatory joke here. The Guildmaster says that, but last I checked, Paul and Ringo are still alive at the time of recording this. Get out of... Okay, so we just did a little bit of a time skip. Um, we are older. We are not much more experienced, though. Don't know why, but, you know, we, we just are not much more experienced. Um, we're late on our, you know, next day of training. Um, 
So we have to, you know, go through all this stuff and then see what all we've forgotten over the years because, well, time flies and. Late to get. You can put yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, we get to use a real sword now. And we get to hit Whisper with it. Well, her staff at any rate. For now. Now pay attention. Now we have to block her attacks with it. Easily done. Okay. Well done. And now it's a no holds barred duel. That's all wrong, Whisper. What goes up then must come down. Whisper. Anyway, we Let's get to now learn more. archery. Melee, nice and easy. Um, yeah. Archery, all the training, honestly, is pretty easy. So now we're going to get to that point where I was talking about aggressive actions. We're going to convince some more. This is your... what do you okay, so, normally, like I was going Let's to say, like I wanted to say that there the is a four-strike rule in the guild. It's time. Um... If you commit four aggressive actions, you are normally sent up to Maze's Tower and given a lecture, like, hey, don't do that. Um, however, if you have a test timer going, it skips that cutscene, and instead, you'll just get the, what do you think you're doing? Act like that in your test, and you'll be disqualified. And you are just allowed to progress, which is literally saving a minute and a half. So, you know, that's fun. Break rules, save time. Well, break some rules. Save time. Final exam time. The hardest one that you'll ever have in your life. Hitting maze seven times with your sword, arrows, and lightning. Also, we know lightning. We're a Sith Lord now. You're getting better at this. Okay. That's enough. So I was just a little bit too slow and a little bit unfortunate with the uh, fact that Maze teleported where he did with that melee phase, but that's okay, because I was still able to get to six out of seven on the lightning hits before his time teleport, his timer-based teleport was, uh, had gone off. And that's still, like, really good. Usually you only see, like, between two and four... If you're, you know, if you have like average luck. First, you are. Now choose notice. There is little else for me so, to teach. So anything more than that is like always, be always good. Life. Always good to see. So we just learned our second spell of the game, or the run, I should say. Assassin Rush. Looks pretty self-explanatory. I use the spell; it propels me forward or whatever direction I am moving towards. Um. It also gives me iframes, and it will also try to zip me behind applicable targeted NPCs. Which will definitely come in handy later. You have also been seeing me pause before I go into these load transitions. Um, that's because... Loads are comprised of the actual load itself, which is the map screen that you see. And then also a random length of a fade time. Now the fade times are normally random, um, usually consistent, but n not always. So um, what I try, what I do with the pausing, is I'm forcing the game to basically make the fades happen quicker. It's like if you're ever late for work at one morning, like really, really late and you realize it and you have like five minutes to get to work and so you're just hurrying, hurrying, oh god, I'm late, I'm late, I need to get to work, I gotta go. It's kind of like that, but on a software level, I guess. <laughs> anyway, that was our next quest there, Wasp Queen, really easy. Um, big, big giant wasps, like wasps the size of um, like a a beagle, I guess. We'll just use beagle. I don't know why a beagle came to mind, but sure, beagle. <laughs> um, 
And then one really, really big one, like the size of a small house, or a tiny house, uh, a portable, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> the size of a truck. How about that? Size of a truck. Anyway, we're going to Bowerstone South now because that is, uh, yeah, that's where Maze is waiting for us. He's got some news for us about um, some goings on. Possibly some news about our family who's gone missing. You know, that's always exciting. Our sister might be alive. That's pretty poggers. Um, before we do that, though, we need to get a little bit of restorative items. And also a fishing rod and spade for later. Because we will be needing those. So before we do that, we need to sell our health potions and resurrection files. Yes, I know I said we're buying restorative items, but specifically mana restoring items. Because we don't need health items. Probably. Over here. Been enjoying Yeah, we're gonna be using a lot of will potions to restore our mana, because we're gonna be using a lot of magic in this run. Sell our current weapons and buy a oak longbow. As that is all we can afford for this next up-and-coming quest, wherein we will be protecting Orchard Farm from three separate waves of three bandits. And now I know that sounds like, oh, that sounds pretty easy, right? Shouldn't be that big of a deal. Well, with our limited toolkit, it is a bit challenging to do both quickly and to make sure that we have a good combat multiplier as well. Now what's what combat multiplier? What what what's this what's this supposed to what what what's that? Very simple. It's basically a combo meter that goes up the more often uh, the more damage you do, preferably at once in a single strike. Um uh, the multiplier name of it, though, is because it multiplies all experience gains by that number. So, let's say I'm using Assassin Rush right now, and it's giving me one will experience point. If I had a combat multiplier of 10, it would give me 10. Pretty straightforward. There are some other things that'll be, like, affecting that as well. Um, like, later we're going to be getting a weapon that has an experience augmentation, which will increase my experience gains by 10%. And that's plus, uh, that's like after the combat multiplier is applied. So, yeah. We're gonna be rolling an experience. Haha, <laughs> more rolling puns. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, let's see here. Protect Orchard Farm. Pretty focus intensive this first bit, so I'm gonna try and do this as best I can. Three, four, target. Ooh. Okay, cool. Got through the first wave just fine. So these are our guard friends for the quest. We are going to be using them to keep our combat multiplier from dropping, as it does do so eventually over time. You'll see that right there. It started trying to tick down. Oh gosh, that was dangerous. Okay, guard took my experience from killing by killing that bandit. That's okay. I'll live. They, however, won't by the end of the quest. Okay. Okay, cool. Got a will potion out of it. I would have been a little bit sad if I didn't get at least one out of those you know, those potion drops, out of those item drops. Hello. Okay, so Whisper wants us to see if wants to see if we know how to flourish. We do know how to flourish. We answered her question by giving her a flourish to the face with our stick. And then we shot her with arrows because she does not how, know how to avoid those right now. She will. She would later, but 
Not right now. So we take full advantage of that and Check just for more quests. beat her by social distancing. <laughs> Hero, your energy is low. What I can't wait for that joke to be dated. But anyway, we are now not going to be following the Guildmaster's advice and returning to the guild. We are instead going to go to the next Cullis Gate, which basically teleporter circle pad thingy. Um, unlocks whenever you visit the region that it's in. So, yeah. Instead of having to go all the way back through those screens that we went through already, we're, um, again, we're going to just go through these areas once, unlock the Cullis Gate, then go back to the guild, grab the next quest, and be on our way. Uh, so, yeah, that bandit was wanting me to pay a toll. I don't want to pay a toll. My gold is quite finite. And I do not wish to part with it. On account of paying some silly toll. And they didn't like that much, so... You know, I angered every single one of them. I can understand why, but, like... No. <laughs> Anyway, our next quest, Trader Escort. Now, I know that one. I definitely had, a, maybe, maybe not necessarily trouble with it, but it's an escort quest. Nobody likes escort quests, right? Well, see, when I was a kid, and I'm sure quite a few watching maybe also uh, probably didn't know about escort quests in this game, you really, most of the time, you don't need to be too careful. Or at least not as careful as you think, because um, I'll, I'll, I'll get into that when we go there. For now, though, I need to go into the uh, guild caves and the Chamber of Fate, specifically, to do something a little bit nefarious. Using the zip behind property of Assassin Rush and using my summon as a portable hitbox, I can go underneath the floor in Chamber of Fate and grab the, hands down, best weapon in the entire series. It deals 550 damage, has a health augmentation, which will gradually restore my health as I do things. I wanted to just kill those guys because they were, like, in my way, and also, like, I didn't want my summon to, um, target them at all. Also, yeah, my, I just had my summon kill that bandit behind me, and, um, yeah, that was, uh, to make it become that enemy. Pretty metal. Um, anyway. Yeah, because we need to do more of that particular thing called summon clipping later. Um... I'm right with the you. wasp is good for stairs, which is good for getting sort of aeons early. Unfortunately, though, we need a bigger hitbox for later clips. Thank you, hero. I'm very grateful. I'm with you. That 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 traitor is infected. He got bitten by a Balverine. Balverines are basically werewolves. Um, so you know we're gonna try and help him out. We're gonna try and make sure he survives this trip through Darkwood. And you'll notice I'm not exactly doing what you would think I would be doing for an escort quest. I'm kind of just blazing a trail and leaving the traders behind, but they're still following me through the next screens. Uh, the next screen will be an exception, but um, yeah, basically, people who are following you, mostly, there are some exceptions, but mostly they will continue following through into the next screen so long as they have the following icon over their heads. Made it to the first camp. Now I'm going to be killing two of these traitors. Yes, I'm leaving the infected one as the sole survivor. Um, there is a method to my madness. Um, because... In this map, um, the traitors are set to go to the camp and heal and have a little bit of a dialogue with the traitors that are there already at the camp. 
So um, that takes a bit of time, and it's faster to just have one trader following me or re-following me than it is to have all three of them, or both of them, if I refused the, uh, to let the infected trader follow me. Um, yeah, basically it's just literally saving time. <laughs> no chit-chats. No messing about. No faffing about, if you will. Just pure time save. Also, some of you probably might not know, the infected trader would will transform into a Balverine after long enough period of time once you have left the uh, Darkwood camp. However, we will not be in Darkwood long enough for that to happen. Hopefully I didn't just go through that area prematurely. I did not. Good. And you can actually get him out safely. And, more so, if you actually have all three traders getting out of Darkwood, surviving the trip, you are rewarded with extra gold for it. Yes, so, Maze is looking for us in Oakvale now. Um, bit auspicious, but okay. Uh, yes, we're going to buy more will potions before we go talk to him. Nope, we're gonna, we're gonna get stuck on the, uh, the building. Trying to assassin rush. And then... So yes, uh, the conversation we just had is that, um... A blind Ceres? No, we, no, that was probably the last one. I forget exactly what all that conversation there on the beach entails, but, um... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, hello? Okay, um... Uh... Uh, anyway, uh, we are ne we need to go to Twin Blades. Now, normally, you're not supposed to be in here yet. And, um, the whole reason I'm doing this is because there's yet another Cullis Gate on the other side of this screen. And it's faster to just, to just do summon clipping and bypass this whole area, which is normally completely infested by bandits. And you have to go through this trying process of opening five chests and getting bandit armor so you can get a disguise to get into the camp. That's just time consuming and frankly not as fun. I want to be a filthy cheating speedrunner. So yeah. Now we get to, um, infiltrate Twin Blades Bandit Camp in hopes of finding his Ceres because she might know where our sister is. That's what the gist of the uh, story is at this point. Come on. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't even touch on the spell Berserk, so why have I been using this big red angry spell? Um, that's because it increases my combat speed as well as my physical damage output. Um Hero, your will energy That was supposed to be a uh, summon clip into a quick fade, but I was a little bit too close to the end of the gate for that to work, and I was somewhat out of the load zone threshold. That's okay though. We'll get it in this next one. Probably. Yeah, so that clip just skipped getting a pass for that first gate, and then there is no pass for this one. So we need to find alternate ways of opening it. I didn't even try the quick fade, but that was a pretty quicker than average fade anyway. So, hey, lucky me. Been waiting for you. So, yeah, Twin Blade's been waiting for us, but if Stand you... Lads. Twin Blade wants a word with this little hero. Why go through all the trouble of keeping me out if you wanted a word with me anyway? Hmm... Purposely taking those two hits there to boost my Berserk damage output. Yes, that is a thing. As I take more hits, I will be able to do more damage while Berserked. Um, 
funny thing about Berserk too, well, Berserk as well, um, as long as you are in Berserk, you cannot die. So that's pretty busted. You have reached recognized status. I just performed what I call a seal buffer there. I uh, held the input to charge my guild seal at the in within like the last half of that autosave load screen bar, and then um, yeah, it just became like an instant thing. It was instantly charged, and then yeah. Seal buffers are pretty fun. They're also exclusive to the original Xbox version of the game. Not even the Xbox version of The Lost Chapters can do that. I don't know why, but you it is what it is. A new quest card. Anyway, um, Maze now wants us to go look for his friend called the Archaeologist, who we call, uh, he calls himself the Archaeologist. Rumor has it that somewhere in which this is a personal favor for him, so... Yeah. Must be pretty serious. His friend must be pretty important to him. Pretty understandable. And Maze is a pretty busy man at the guild, so, you know, there's not necessarily any telling whether or not he has the time. He could be swamped with final exams and stuff, you know? Really hard. Especially with the guild apprentices there. I mean, have you seen the way they practice their will? It's embarrassing, really. Although, that kind of undermines my whole idea of so, final exam swapping me. I don't know. I don't know, actually. It's kind of sus now that I think about it, but anyway. So, the archaeologist is alive. That's good. Thanks to you, I'm sure we can keep him safe. Uh, you should return to the guild now. There's an important quest card waiting for you. Seems not whole glade is in some trouble. Got it. So, um, yeah, we're not gonna follow Maze's advice here. Check the guild for more. We are going to go straight to not whole glade first because, hey, wouldn't you know it? There's another call escape there. So, yeah. We're just gonna skip all that backtracking and do it once and be over with it and be done with it. One and done, if you will. Never to be traversed this direction again. <laughs> we'll be going back through that screen a couple more times, but this is the end. Yeah. Toll Glade. It's under, so its gates are barred for the moment. Come back to the guild and take a quest to help. And before we go back to Knothole Glade, we are going to upgrade a couple of things here. We're going to upgrade our physique. Now we are going to learn the spell Multi-Strike. Basically does what it says on the tin. And that will do it. For the time being. So, Physical Shield. That's a pretty cool sounding spell, right? Um, it kind of kind of does what it says on the tin. Um, instead of having damage come out of your health bar, it comes out of your magic. So long as you have magic to spare. Hero, your will energy is low. What's that? I think the function of multi-strike is pretty self-explanatory. Needed to kill those four Balverines really quick in order to, you know, progress through the quest. This is the White Balverine. We need to basically hit him ten times because the game is trying to tell us that this thing is not some natural thing. Um, and we will need a special kind of tool, weapon, 
dare I say we need our weapon to be augmented in some way. Um, in order to properly deal damage to it. But we have the most powerful sword in the game, so I think that's a load of bupkis. Um, <laughs> if you'll pardon the, uh, if you'll pardon my Yiddish. Um, I'm pretty sure that's Yiddish anyway. Um, yeah, we have a silver augmentation now. We're supposed to be, like, cementing the idea that Balverines are weak to silver weapons, and, um... They actually, like, white Balverines especially are especially weak because um, they take six times extra damage from uh, weapons with silver augmentations on them. Per augmentation, so that's... Um, if we had two silver augmentations on, like, our bow, we could actually one-shot a white Balverine. And they have 3,000 3, health, which we're gonna see me, like, take a little bit longer than one-shotting to get through in a second here, but, you know, that's okay. Making do with what we have. We're actually going to be saving that silver augmentation for later. Oop, okay. Didn't need to apply multi-strike there, and that's okay, because we are going to lose it because of the cutscene. Ooh, cheap shot. Wow, mean. Oh, get... Oh, okay, that's fine. That's recoverable. Ooh, a very unique, um, flourish animation. Okay, so yeah, we did get hit there, but that wasn't... That was actually recoverable, because thankfully the combat multiplier has these things called secure levels, or safe levels. I forget exactly what it is, but it starts with an S. Um, but yeah, basically there are, like, safety levels of sorts um, that your combat multiplier would drop down to if you, you take really damage, depending on, like, how high it is. So, like, 5 is the first one, 10 is the second one, I think... I think 20 is the next one, and then I know 40 is like the highest safe level that you can have after taking damage. So if you have anything higher than 40, it's really sad when you take damage. Which will hopefully not be happening during the arena, which is where we're going to next. Um, no, we need to upgrade accuracy our accuracy once here. We need to learn Force Push and upgrade it and another time. And then we need to upgrade our magic power for our mana capacity. Okay. <clears throat> you know, I actually should have... I should have killed somebody in a video game here. <coughs> because, um... I usually do, actually, in my, uh, my personal best run world record route. Um, it's actually faster to kill somebody before leaving, and then um, upon your return you'd actually get kicked out of town, which would save that whole, like, little stretch of movement. It's pretty cheeky, and I'm pretty proud of it, having uh, bought it up. But that's okay. Because, in that same vein, we would also be paying, like, 2,000 gold, and our gold is, like I said earlier, it is finite. It wouldn't be a problem if I had done it. But, now we do have 2,000 extra gold to mess around with. Not that we're going to be doing a whole lot of messing around with it anyway, but, you know, we're not in any sort of dire financial straits as a result of our, uh, Hero, Maliciousness. <clears throat> or, I guess at this point it would be benevolence because we didn't actually commit any atro atrocious murder. So. I'm pleased to serve you. Anyway, we are going to be buying will potions here, another silver augmentation, and we are going to be buying an ebony longbow. No 
augmenting that bow and equipping it. And then we are going to be pushing this guard here, his name's Al, um, over towards an area where we will be placed after a cutscene has initiated, because we need to talk to Al to enter the arena once it's our turn. The person who is ahead of us is out there doing his best. Hopefully he doesn't die, though. It might take a little while if he is successful. Um, he actually gets through the f three rounds pretty easily, and in really, really swift pace, too. Let's hope he can go for a fourth. Al, you need to stay. You need to stay. Nope. Chameleon only made it through three rounds before dying like a chicken in front of 5,000 people. Which is totally a number that the Xbox could have handled. Even if it was just all JPEGs. Or GIFs. I actually don't know what those people in the stand, what the audience members are comprised of, but it's some tomfoolery. Definitely not 5,000 of them now. So yeah, I learned a new spell earlier called Force Push. Pretty much does what it says on the tin. It just looks pretty self-explanatory. What's the deal with the combat multiplier though? Why am I? Why is it going up and I'm like using it on corpses? Well, funny thing. Force push doesn't discriminate um, living targets or deceased targets. So as long as it's hitting a body, uh, you'll gain combat multiplier off of it, which is pretty busted. The higher level your force push, the more bodies, the higher combat multiplier will increase. See, these are Hobbs. We've seen a few of them here and there, but not in really high numbers. They're cruel, they're smelly. They're stiff in places, especially after I've killed them. Um, oh, I, meant I summoned and I didn't mean to do that. That's okay, though. Oh yeah, something else about summon, or not summon, but berserk, rather. Um, attacks, by and large, will be unblockable. Same with multi-strike. So, um, along with that, they will also force a knockdown on the enemy. So, it's wise to use both, assa not assassin rush, but multi-strike and, um, what do you call it? <laughs> multi-strike and berserk. Simultaneously. In order to avoid, um, you know, or in order to maximize damage for the knockdown, that will be happening no matter like how you slice it. So. so now we're gonna see just how much damage a uh, double silver augmented. Have any longbow does to a white Valvrian, and well, there you go. Uh, well, uh, there it is. As a uh, Jeff Goldblum once said. Well, uh, there, there it is. A little bit of cheeky target cycling. So yes, Whisper is now in the arena with us, and we can talk to her to interrupt the uh, announcer's dialogue at the end of the rounds, which is really helpful. Whisper, however, can be a lot less than in combat. That is a perfect example. She just knocked over that undead.
You are also seeing me take an extra hit here and there just to burst my berserk damage output. Same concept as before. I'd use Switzerland Blade, but we're going to be using it to a much greater extent in here. Because um, the big undead here, they have a thousand health, and I can't quite do a thousand health with just Berserk and a regular old melee swing. I hope the competition's hiding up. We three, two. It's a lot more of the same that's been going on so far, just with different enemy types. Oh no! Target him, thank you! Yeah, the arena is admittedly pretty focus intensive, so the bits where I've been mostly quiet has been mostly for concentration. Those are rock trolls. Um, I sliced through them like a hot knife through butter because of the uh... funny thing about the uh, the blade trap there. If I stand in the middle of it, I get hit by all the blades at once. So um, that racks up berserk damage boosts really, really quickly and absurdly. Allowing me to kill both of those rock trolls in a single cycle of berserk is just crazy. Because those things, along with having a lot of health, they are also very well armored. And this is Arachnox. He is just a giant, giant scorpion. Could you imagine if there were scorpions like this in the real world? I don't think anybody wants to imagine that. But, well, I guess video game creators and players might. This. We have two winners. Two winners and only one prize? I don't think so, but that's okay. We're just going to assert dominance over Whisper here. And then we're going to leave. Let's stop fighting now. Because killing her is admittedly slower than sparing her.
My dear lady, it was mere luck. He's nothing but a... Yeah, that, that's Thunder. That's that's Whisper's big brother. I have Chatting with Lady Grey. Um, the femme fatale character of the game. Um, we're not going to be touching, like, on her, really, because we're not going to be... She, she's just an entire side quest that we don't need to be bothering with. Same with Thunder, really. And he's kind of rude to us anyway, so, you know... Who needs to deal with them? They're not part of the main quest, which is what we're doing. So, yeah. Anyway. What I neglect something I neglected to say earlier was that the um the blind Cirrus that we met at Twin Blades was in fact our sister. So we get to speak with her again, as we just were introduced in a cutscene that we skipped to the main antagonist of the game, Jack of Blades. Check the guild for more quests. Who burned down our home and cut out her eyes. Yes, that happens. Um Yeah. We're unfortunately shown, well, fortunately or unfortunately, you decide. We are we are told, not shown. Um, anyway, we're going to do our fa final bit of experience upgrades. We're gonna max out our speed, almost max out our physique. We don't need to completely max it because A, it's expensive, and B, we literally don't need it that high anyway. Uh, we don't need anything in that. We do need max multi-strike. Max Assassin Rush, so we get the full distance possible. Um, increase the Berserk and effectiveness. Increase Berserk's timer and effectiveness. Learn Multi Arrow, max it out. Get Magic Power maxed as well. Wonderful. We are all set to go and beat the game. After a few more main quests, of course. The first of which is rescuing the archaeologist from Jack of Blades' minions. So, you know, that's all good. Yes. It's okay, though. We're going to be rescuing him. It's all good. Oh, hello there. Um... Before we progress on to that area, though, we're going to be stopping one last time over here. Well, maybe, depending on our potion count. Buying some more will potions and a master longbow, because we will be wanting that for two more fights coming up. Uh, one is on our escape from an area we are breaking into, and then um, the final battle where I will hopefully be able to show off a frame-perfect trick. Following! I've never seen it. Okay. <clears throat> so now we are at our maximum movement speed, essentially. With both um, maximum assassin rush, max speed, and almost max berserk, although the speed increase of berserk is universal across all ranks of it, so that's not quite the speedy to have it at its highest, but it does help because, you know, longer duration and everything, you're not coming out of it anywhere near as often. Also, my secondary role is, like, not well-timed, apparently. At least I'm getting some quick fades. That's making up for it. Copium. Anyway. So yeah, this bit here is timed, but it's also, like, not a big deal. We're, we got plenty of time. Especially because we are moving so quickly, and we can one-shot these minions just fine. And with those, um, with those two on the dock, you and Archaeologist me. taking his time to acknowledge the fact, hey, those minions are dead now. You know. Check the for more 
you received a new quest card. Quest completes, and we can go on about our merry, merry way. Okay. So. Funny thing about Assassin Rush and Stairs, the two really don't mix too well. I mean, outside of, like, clipping into the stairs. Um, in general, Assassin Rush just doesn't like traveling upstairs or across some bridges. Just due to the way it's programmed. It's a little hard to combat sometimes, but, you know, gotta make do with what you can get. Yeah, so... Reason we needed to rescue the archaeologist was because A, he's innocent of things, except for, you know, looking into things that he maybe shouldn't be looking into, but you know, it's not every day you attract the attention of a uh, a would be deity that is Jack of Blades. Um huh. a being not of this world, huh. let me just put it that way. Um wow. Whoa. Hello. But yeah, his life was put in danger because, well, we found him in his cave. He was hiding from um, Jack and his minions because he found something big, something that Jack wants, something that I already have, but, you know, never mind that little, you know, break in the story. Basically, Jack is after the Sword of Aeons that is on my back right now. But he won't ever see that. Probably because his mask is just obscuring his vision. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the reason, the other reason we needed to rescue him was because he knows how to get into Bargate Prison, which is where our mother is being held. And um, it's through a secret passage in this here graveyard. And I'm going through collecting all these pieces of equipment belonging to this person named Nostro because, um, yeah, the gravekeeper there was trying to commit some grave robbery and make a fortune off of this ancient weapon and armor and helmet and shield and all that stuff. But, um, we returned Nostro's belongings to him. He's grateful, so he opens up the path towards uh, Dragate Prison for us. Like the pal that he is. Unlike the NTSC that the uh, Gravekeeper is. Undead are a little bit annoying in terms of movement because they can just resurface, essentially teleporting anywhere on, like, actual ground. Stairs and stuff are an exception because they are not, like, actual terrain. They are static objects. And, yeah. Obviously, that, like, gets in the way of being able to use Assassin Rush and going places and, you know, rolling is a little bit weird with rolling and rolling into, and into people. You tend to not go anywhere and it's just... Painful. Need to wait for the undead to enter the circle before they are vulnerable. Oh, oh gosh. You've received a new quest card. Okay. But yeah, that, that is a quest that the uh, community has been wanting to be able to skip for a very long time. Everything we've tried, however, has, well, not been successful. Because, for some reason, this these two points in the game are structured incredibly well. There is so much duct tape and bubblegum 
that went into the structure of these two quests here. Okay, these three quests. Oh my god, can I hit the undead, please? Thank you. I, I, I'm fumbling. This is fine. This is fine. It's all fine. Anyway. Yeah, just a lot of movement. Some annoying bits with, with what with the undead and everything. You know. A barrier here, then I need to kill some more undead to dispel, just like that one room that had the uh, three plus another one that was, you know, already on to me earlier. Now we get to go through a oh, section no, tunnel. With a bunch of neutral guards. Neutral as in, if you kill them, they do not give you any alignment adjustments. You are neither good nor evil for killing them. They are completely independent. Except for the fact that they work for Jack of Blades, I guess, but, you know. He's a mean dude, so... Understandable. But it turns out it was a trap all along! Dun dun dun! And that guard is apparently so hungry. And this would be a wonderful time to go get yourself a snack, get yourself some hydration fluid, go to the bathroom, much like that guard was doing. You know? Good time for those things. Temper Tibbs, temper! You should keep all that energy for later. You'll need it then. <laughs> it's a good time to wind down, oh, regain your composure, if you had lost it at all. It won't work and again. then... The boss made yeah. sure of that. This is the biggest reason here why um, we're looking for skips still. Um, because this is just multiple minutes of simply listening to dialogue in the open world which cannot be skipped. It can be spoken faster in languages other than English, um, with French being the fastest, saving 34 seconds with just this prison dialogue. Um, every other language that changes the voice acting to some degree is also faster than English, um, and there could be a bit war for choosing language. Um, I do believe, though, that um, English probably has the most of a nostalgia factor, as um, every single version of the game released with English um, in the United States and the United Kingdom, I know um, there was only English. Um, in France and Germany, they have... Um, their two respective languages, as well as with Spain and Italy. And then, um, Japan also got, uh, Japanese. There isn't, there is Chinese, but it's only text, and that still just has English voice acting. That is also the only region I don't have a copy of. Look lively, and goodness knows I've been looking for a while. Out. It's race time, and you'd better put on a good show. Some of us have better. I'll find a copy someday, you. though. Copian. Win, and we like you. Lose, and you get around in the torture chamber. That sounds fun. Yes, sounds fun. <laughs> Let me hear it. Anyway, yes, it's it's time for a race within the prison. So, yay, speed running. Related, sort Three, of. Two, one. Ah. Anyway, yeah, these guys are kind of slow. 
Move on, you ugly maggot! Because we have the wonderful power of rolling, and just that, because we don't have any magic for some reason. They somehow managed to take our magic away. Because reasons, I guess. I don't know. But, yeah, we have the power of rolling. Also a shortcut. Because, yeah. You are in no way penalized for using this shortcut. And the NPCs do not use it at all. So, you know. Take what you can get. Oh gosh, that was so bad. I was supposed to roll, yes, but I was not supposed to increase that bar that's increasing with said roll. So I mistimed my roll input. That was not the book I was targeting. That's interesting. I wonder if the books will be open. Yeah, I wonder if we'll have two books open well, when I go well, back there. Well, because, we yeah, again, eh? that whole little Stay stealth thing I'll was supposed to, you to, um... We're looking for the key to the cells early. in that little stealth bit. And he has... The warden of the prison has the keys in one of the three diaries. And thankfully, it's not random. You always will get the first, you'll, you'll always get the key after you've won the race and get to do the stealth bit and have spent one year in prison. And that's why we are here again. That's why we're doing a race again. Look lively, scum. Time to move out. It's race time. And you'd better put on a good show. Some of us have bet a lot of money on you. Win, and we like you. Lose, and you get around in the torture chamber. That sounds fun. Yes, sounds fun. <laughs> Let me hear it. Also, a quick little shout out to the overscan um, with the uh, gold marker, or the, the quest marker. Just... It's doing its little thing in the corner. It's existing. It would normally be cut off by, um, as, you know, on a CRT, depending on, you know, how you have your, your scan set. But yeah, I prefer playing this with an overscan. There we go. That's a lot better. Gray okay. Is the prettiest color. Oh, gray is the prettiest color. Oh, gray. We did have two books open. Okay. So yeah, my suspicion on why that happens, and it's, I've never had it where we've gotten um, all three books open. I, I'm not sure if that would, if that is even is possible. But if it is, I am not sure if it would cause a soft lock. But my suspicion as to why it happens is because the, so the target system is a bit weird. And there's also an input buffer. Um, so, like, you can interact with things. Oh my goodness, wow. Rude. Hitting me in the back? That's so rude. I mean, I am trying to escape and everything, but don't have to be so mean about it. I didn't mean to apply multi-strike, though I did mean to apply multi-arrow. Speaking of multi-arrow, actually, let's go ahead and equip that Master Longbow now, because we are going to be using it in just a couple of minutes or so. Okay, less than a couple of minutes. Maybe like a minute. Little lag spike from opening the cell door and getting the next part of the quest started. What the hell? Get him! In 
Now we are finally able to escape, though our path will be blocked once more by a Kraken, and that fight will actually be... It can be challenging for some people, I think, but I have ways of making it easier. Mostly using multi-arrow. Um, although, if should that particular strategy not fail, I can always fall back on using my sword, because it does present um, windows that you can hit it with melee strikes here and there. So, yeah, hopefully we won't be needing to use the sword much, if at all. and easy. We're going to be saving one last charge of multi-arrow for, um, hopefully, the Jack of Blades fight. I meant to do a seal buffer there. Oopsie daisy. That's okay. So yes, now we get to go back to Arrow Fields because that is the closest location to Ancient Coliscate, which is where we are supposed to be going in order to access the area of Hook Coast. Now this Coliscate is, well, ancient, and it doesn't really do anything. Uh, but thankfully, thanks to, you know, because of the power of um, plot contrivances, um, there will now be undead that spawn, and this Coliscate is hungry for undead souls for some reason. Because plot contrivances. The in the of like I said. But, yeah. The gate will only open when it's hung for undead souls. I'm gonna be trying to focus on the bigger, like the biggest of the undead that spawn in here because those cause the meter to increase the most. Although, you know, obviously I'll just have to work with what I can get. It would obviously be nice if I had gotten some cleaves there, but those you were all like pretty clean single target hits, which is not really what you want to see. Focusing on the generals there are is is key, but yeah, sometimes you just have to Yeah. Take what you can get, you know. So we've discovered a barrier that shouldn't be here. I wonder why that is. Our mother, uh, who we did rescue from Bargate Prison, obviously, is back at the guild. Uh, she found a book in Maze's quarters that might help us. Are you in your way? Something isn't right here. What? No! No! Oh, no! So that doesn't sound good, does it? Our mother, it turns out, was recaptured by Jack of Blades' minions, and, well, yeah, things are... Things are starting to come to a close in terms of story, because... We are approaching the final showdown. Yeah. Um, 
Our sister and mother both had targets on their back. So, you know, hopefully our sister is okay. We can't exactly go after our mother because we have no idea where she was teleported to. What's happening with her? We are, we are in the dark on that. Um, however, we do need to investigate the um the dust you know this this ruined abbey here in hook coast because that is where this little thing called this it's not very little actually the susceptible key which is part of what jack of blades is looking for he needs that in order to activate these things called focus sites in order for his uh sword to be made uh visible even though he could just take his mask off really quick and look on my back and find the sword just fine. Not that I'd like to give it to him, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Also, this barrier is a door. And this fight is also really specific, so I'm going to focus on it. Okay, perfect. Alright, so... Um, basically, what's going on here was I am timing hits in a way that lets me, like, maximize damage output. Um, because... If I do that right, and with a high enough level of multi-strike, I can actually bypass um, mazes like health barriers. So like, um, Arachnox was a good example of an enemy having health barriers because he needed to do that burrowing animation in order for me to continue doing damage to him. Um, same with the Wasp Queen, actually. That would have been the absolute first um, example of health barriers where um, the enemy needed to do an animation or series of animations in order for them to be damageable again. Ah, Undead spawned in front of Jack and took the lightning bolt for him. That's sad, but whatever. No big loss. Just minorly unlucky. Hopefully I can get a lightning strike here, though. Like that. There we go. That just saves a little bit of extra rolling and such. Tiny little micro-optimizations, if you will. Uh, thank you. Trying to use my potion. <laughs> But yeah, um, basically, um, Maze was a traitor who was working for Jack all along, from the very beginning, and, um, he spared us in Oakvale. He was, like, part of the entire raid on Oakvale in the beginning. He spared us because he felt like, um, that could be, like, a chance at redemption and defeating Jack. Redemption for him, it was not, but... You know, defeating Jack, well, that's obviously yet to be seen. Spoilers, I'll totally beat him. <laughs> In the end. Um, hopefully there won't be any false starts to that. You know, knock on wood. Um, but yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, Jack is currently going around and activating the... Gosh, what is it? There's Witchwood, Greatwood Lake, Hob Cave, and then Gibbet Woods. That's four focus sites. And, um, yeah. Wreaking havoc all over the world, as you can tell by the, uh, you know, sky being completely red and everything. Summoning minions and undead and these things called screamers, basically uh, phantom wraith ghost thingies. Um, yeah. <laughs> now the guild's on fire, because, hey, wouldn't you know it, the... Uh, yeah, things are going down in the Chamber of Fate right now, so let's uh, go in there and crack some skulls. Well, uh, yeah, so our sister is here. Um, 
Our, he, our mother was just killed right in front of us. Very traumatic. But you know what? Nope, no frame perfect big shot today, but that's okay. Um, but yeah. This still will not take very long at this point because we have max accuracy, max multi arrow. We'll just need to pull the shot back for a little bit, dodge this energy beam, and shoot Jack for the kill. And then, because of reasons, we're going to break the franchise continuity a little bit. And that is Fable right there. Um, yeah. The reason I didn't spare Whisper, or not Whisper, but Teresa there, was because um, when you go to throw away the Sword of Aeons and make the good choice, um, the confirmation box for destroying the sword, it can take a little while to show up sometimes, so it's not consistent, it's actually kind of random. Um, killing with uh, Teresa just so happens to be the most consistent option of the two. But yeah, like I said, that is Fable Any Percent. Um, I've been Sarah Venza, and I will see you in the next one. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs>